Welcome to First Congregational Church in Guilford, Connecticut. Like many in the United Church of Christ, we say whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Today, the service is for Sunday, May 8th. This is Mother's Day. We understand that it's a complicated day for many. So know that you are in our prayers, whether you are celebrating your mother who is with you, longing for one who has gone, wishing for a relationship that didn't happen, or wanting to be a mother, and for many circumstances are not able to at this time. We are grateful for all who parent people in unique ways, and we are thankful for those who've offered blessings when we did not receive them ourselves. So prayers for this particular Sunday with the array of feelings that come. As we join together this morning, our psalm is one that is familiar to many. It is Psalm 23. Some of you know it by heart. Feel free to say it as you know it. Others may want to open and read the text. This is a combination from the Lord's Prayer and the Inclusive Bible, the King James Version and the Inclusive Bible. Hear now these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leadeth me beside the still waters, restoreth my soul, leads me in the path of righteousness for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this passage. As Ginger already told us, the 23rd Psalm is one of the most cherished and most familiar passages of Scripture. Tradition holds that King David wrote these lyrics to be sung, like all the Psalms, but before being Israel's king, David was a shepherd boy tending flocks out in the fields, probably how he got so good with a sling and took down the mighty Goliath, protecting his sheep. So if it was actually David who penned these words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He knew exactly how deep and how parental the bond is between a shepherd and their sheep. Now, once I understood this psalm from the point of a sheep following along, being led by God, the good shepherd, and for me that's no real stretch because what I know about sheep is that they're stubborn animals who make bad decisions for themselves. They will graze in the same spot over and over until it's bare, unless a shepherd takes them to a new green pasture. And sheep fear the shadows because at night is when the predators come out and they also get easily lost. They require a savvy shepherd. But I don't want to speak for any of you. I will only admit my own sheep-like behaviors and stubbornness, and I can say, quite honestly, that I can get stuck in ruts rather than seeking new things. I will avoid facing the shadowy, uncomfortable parts of my life, and my husband, Al, can assure you that I excel at getting lost, even with a GPS. So as much as I can see these comparisons between myself and sheep, I actually don't think that's the point of the 23rd Psalm. I don't think it's about how we're ornery humans who need to be led around like mindless sheep. I think the 23rd Psalm is not actually about us, but about God. How God is so good and extraordinary and present in our lives how God is like this amazing shepherd that is always with us in the green glorious times of life as well as the deep potholes. God with us in the chaos, in the muddled relationships, in 
financial stress and relationship stress and illness and insecurities. God doesn't magically manipulate our lives or shelter us from all harm, but God is constant, unchanging, unshakable. In the face of all of this, God is with us. And for me, that's the power of the 23rd Psalm, perhaps why it reassures and comforts God's people throughout the ages, because it describes with such vivid detail how deeply we're loved and nurtured and sought after by God. So somewhere in my house, I actually looked for it this morning and couldn't find it, is a photograph of me in very high Wellington rain boots holding a baby lamb just a few minutes old. And it is from my senior year of high school when I was an exchange student in England and I was there during lambing season. And seeing a whole mess of baby lambs being born is incredible and life-changing and very loud. There's a lot of bawling and bleeding going on. But there is one moment that I replay often that happened during lambing, which is when there was a wee little lamb born that was not breathing on its own. And the father of the family scooped that lamb up bounded across the yard into the big farm family kitchen and he put that lamb right on the kitchen table right next to the teapot and the jam and the toast half eaten and he started mouth to mouth resuscitation on this little lamb and he's pushing on its teeny stomach saying come on little one you can do it come on and we all waited and then one little leg twitched, and then two little legs kicked, and its belly rose and fell, and we all went, yeah! Everybody's cheering and high-fiving, but not, not the father. He took that lamb and put it up in his coat and sat in the rocking chair by the fireplace and starts singing lullabies to this lamb and feeding it with a little medicine dropper and talking to it and encouraging her all day, all night long, until the next morning he returned the lamb to its father, who was anxious and bleeding and being very loud because we heard her all through the night, worried about her baby lamb. So when I hear the 23rd Psalm, I am brought back to that moment of a shepherd literally breathing his own breath into a lamb. And when I pray the 23rd Psalm, I picture God holding me, cheering me on and saying, come on, I've got you, you can do it. And it's like that intense personal connection that happens right at the heart of the 23rd Psalm, right in the middle, when the poet is not speaking of the Good Shepherd, but directly to the shepherd and says, even though I walk through the darkest valley or the shadow of death, whatever translation you're reading, I fear no evil, for you are with me. It's like that intense personal conversation right at the heart of the 23rd Psalm, where the poet is no longer speaking of the Good Shepherd, but directly to the shepherd. And depending on your translation, it says, even though I walk through the shadow of death, or even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. You are with me. You comfort me. You spread a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. God is revealed not as some way off celestial figure up there in the clouds or some distant realm that we don't have access to. God is a friend, a confidant, someone who holds us as close as a shepherd, who breathes their own breath into a lamb. And this kind of familiarity and intimacy with God is what we all long for and desire, especially in the most desolate valley. So something else I witnessed while I was on the farm was how shepherds would take the sheep, every single sheep, and there were a lot of them, and they scoop them up and comb their fingers all over them, just, just like I do with Jack, my dog, or you might do with your animals at home, and they're checking for any signs of illness or infection, scars and scabs, and they know every single one of them and where they have 
you know, oh, that's where that one broke its foot or got bit by something. And they take oil, herbal oil from their pockets and anoint it wherever the sheep has some sort of injury. And they put extra oil on the sheep's head because that's supposed to keep the pests and the flies and the ticks and things out of their eyes and ears. So that really opens up the 23rd Psalm for me because I need that image of God, the anointing shepherd, who knows my every scab and scar, who knows all my mess and all my doubts and all my insecurities, but is still with me. And then that very last line in the 23rd Psalm, it's usually the one people boom out in communal worship. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The translation says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. But that is really a much gentler verb than the ancient Hebrew conveys. It would be better if it said, goodness and mercy chase after me. Or as a seminary friend once wrote for one of our classes, God's goodness and mercy relentlessly hunt me down even when I push it away. More simply, as we said in our call to worship earlier, God's goodness and mercy pursue us all the days of our lives. This is where the 23rd Psalm ends. It's where it brings us. We have a God, a shepherd-like God, who wants us, who knows us and loves us anyway, even goes around seeking us out, chasing us down, finding us, no matter what. And quite honestly, I need to know that right now. Families, jobs, community, our world, we are constantly bombarded with things that hurt and frighten us and cause us pain. And here is the 23rd Psalm singing that God's goodness and mercy pursue us every day. So soak that in for a minute. God's love and goodness anoint each one of us. And with all that overflowing compassion and nurturing, we can think of ourselves not like sheep, but as gentle shepherds. We can take that comfort, love, and goodness and pay it forward to one another. May we feel held and comforted by our generous God and also ready to return that comfort and love, ready to love one another as tenderly and as remarkably as we have been loved. And all God's people said, Amen.